Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our the Pinellas County Property Appraisers first public education session of 2024. Happy New Year to all of you out there. Um, my name is Kevin McKeon. I'm the Deputy of Assessment Administration representing the Honorable Mike Twitty, your Pinellas County Property Appraiser. Today, um, our session revolves around understanding homestead exemption and the Save Our Homes benefit. Um, a few housekeeping items. If you have any questions during the presentation, by all means, just put your question in the chat box. I'm happy to stop uh, and take questions during the presentation. And of course, I'll take some after as well. But uh, so so let's so let's get started. Um, to talk about the homestead exemption. A little bit of history of the homestead exemption in Florida. Uh, the first homestead exemption was $5,000 back in 1934. Um, and then it doubled in 1960. And in 1980, um, the legislature passed a $25,000 exemption. Um, uh, and then in 1992 to 95 was probably the most significant piece that will deal with later the Save Our Homes Amendment. Um, and then in 20, 2008, an additional $25,000 exemption was passed, as well as a 10% um, non-homestead cap on non-homesteaded properties. So there is two $25,000 exemptions to equal the 50,000. The first exemption is on your assessed value between zero and 25,000. The value between 25 and 50,000, there is no exemption. And then the second exemption is the value between 50 and 75,000. And that particular second $25,000 exemption does not apply to school taxes. So you will still only have a $25,000 exemption related to your school taxes. Obviously, anything above 75, there is no exemption. So the first and second 25,000, if you qualify for the full 50, um, depending on your taxing di district, initially in the first year, saves you 50 to 500 to $1,000 off your property taxes. From that point forward, however, if you have homestead, your annual increase of your assessed value is limited to 3% or CPI, whichever is lower. Um, and in 2023, um, CPI will again be 3%, which will impact your 2024 values. So this exemption in and of itself, this Save Our Homes cap is extremely valuable to Florida homesteaders. What are the qualifying criteria for qualifying for homestead? You must own and occupy as of a January 1. If you recently bought your house and your closing was January 6th, um, you have to wait to qualify for homestead until 2025. Uh, it, it, so everything in our world is as of a January 1. We value properties as of that date, and we determine your eligibility for exemptions as of that date as well. You must be a permanent Florida resident. Um, pretty much that is defined as having a Florida driver's license and having your car registered here. There is only one homestead per person or marital unit. So if you own two or three homes, you can only have one homestead in your name. If you are married, a husband and wife cannot have two homesteads. Um, so if you are planning on getting married and you're both homesteaded in properties right now, um, we can help you make the decision which which one. Well, obviously, you're going to decide which home you're going to live in as a married married couple, and the other property has to remove their homestead. You cannot have any other residency based exemption anywhere in the world. 
um, primarily the United States. Um, uh, for instance, a, a Canadian resident um, cannot have cannot have a homestead here in Florida because a residency based exemption, which is very valuable to Canadian citizens, which is their health care, um, unless they rescind their health care in Canada, they they are not eligible for homestead here in Florida. And a corporate entity like an LLC or an Inc. <clears throat> cannot qualify for a homestead exemption. It has to be an individual. At the end of this month, um, you will receive a renewal notice. Um, if you are homesteaded already, and if you are a new homesteader that has already been approved for 2024, this will let you know that you have the homestead exemption and any other exemptions in this section here, you see names and the exemption. If you have other exemptions, they will be listed here. Um, there is nothing you need to do other than read this notice if in fact nothing has changed. And it says in red, no response required unless there are changes. And we delineate several changes on this notice. Did you get married? Did you uh, do you want my your homestead removed because you may have bought another property that you want homesteaded in another county or in Pinellas County? Um, is one of the owners deceased? Did you get um, is is uh, did you start renting a portion of your property? All of these things give you an opportunity to let us know that there's a change in your status. Short of that, we will continue your homestead but you are obligated to let us know the change in your status um, if, it, if you believe it impacts your homestead and your homestead exemption. And again, you will receive this uh, either the last week of January or the first week of February. The other important mailing that gets mailed out from our office, and some of you who own property prior uh, in, in 2023, um, uh, and prior is, is the notice of proposed property taxes. This is an extremely important notice that um, even though it says do not pay, this is not a bill, we urge you to pay attention to this notice when you receive it. You will receive it the last week of August in 2024. Um, and it has a value, a, a bunch of valuable information. It has the market value of your home, both this year and last year, the assessed value of your home and the taxable value and an estimate of your property taxes with preliminary millage rates as set by your taxing authorities. So please pay attention to this notice and you can see in the top there, your market assessed and taxable. Excuse me, if your taxable value is less than your assessed, you have exemptions that reduce your assessed value to taxable value. And in the bottom portion of this trim notice, you will see all the all the um, exemptions you have that are applied to your assessed value, reducing um, your assessed value to taxable value. You can download your last year's trim notice from our, our website, pcpao.gov. Um, go into tools, hit trim notice, and um, you can see your 2023 trim notice. And, and you, it's, it's easy to search and easy to find. You can also find your tax bill, uh, 2023 tax bill and others on, on our website as well. With the trim notice, we include an informational supplement um, that again, we encourage you to read because the mailing of this notice of proposed property taxes triggers a 25 day window whereby you can still file for exemptions for the current year between usually, uh, let's say August 24th and, and September 15th or uh, and and still be eligible for that year. But once you pass that magic date, which is which this year was September 15th, 
you cannot be eligible for any exemptions for that current calendar year. So it is extremely important. And if you have any issues with the value of your property or the fact that you were denied an exemption, this is the same 25 day window that allows you to file a VAB petition, which is value adjustment board petition with the clerk of the court. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to um, state your case as to why um, your value on your property should be changed or you should be entitled to an exemption that our, our office may have denied. Now we'll move into the Save Our Homes cap. So in 1992, the Lee County property appraiser proposed an amendment and it was approved by the voters that limited the assessed value increase for homesteaded properties. Welcome, sir. Come on in and have a seat. It limited the assessed value increase of homesteaded property to the lesser of 3% or the percentage change in, in the consumer price index. This was done and designed because Florida residents at the time with market values increasing were being taxed out of their homes due to rapidly increased market values. So again, a homesteaded property, the year after you're homesteaded, your assessed value for tax purposes is limited to an increase of 3% or CPI, whichever is lower. And then the difference between market value and that assessed value as it grows over time is known as the Save Our Homes benefit. And we'll go into this in a lot more detail. So this gives a picture of the last uh, 12 years of CPI and the cap on your assessed value. Um, as you can see, the last three years, 22, 23, and 24, CPI was above 3%, um, the National Consumer Price Index, so it's capped at 3. Every other year on this chart from 13 to 21, CPI was actually lower than 3%, so your assessed value only increased by that percentage um, in any given year as long as you were homesteaded. And even in some years, it was less than 1% in 2015 and 2016. Now, the non-homestead cap, which is available, it's a cap available to um, commercial real estate and residential real estate that is not homesteaded, came in in 2008. So that cap, which was recently renewed a couple years ago, is on, on second homes, homes that um, are not eligible for homestead exemption, vacation homes, rental properties, commercial property, et cetera. So your assessed value, again, no matter if market value goes up more than 10, your assessed value can only go up 10%. Yes, sir. Thank you. So um, right now I have a second home here, a confident. Uh, I've been in the process of getting a homestead, but I need to get any time for this tax year. So, so basically, if I'm homesteaded, it, it only goes up 3% of the appraised value. But if not, it automatically reverts to 10%, no more than that, increase over the past, previous year tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the question is homestead versus 10%, and I'll, I'll try to answer that. If you had a homesteaded property, then let's say you homesteaded this year. Okay, for 2024, yeah. 2025 and after, you are eligible to that 3% max increase. In 2024, the first year you file, your property goes to market value. The first year you file for homestead, it there is a cap reset, just like the first year, first January one, you, you cross after you bought a property, it goes to market value. So next January, when I get my tax fall at the end of the year, would, would I already have the uh, 
Will the homestead apply or I have to wait for the following? No, the homestead would be applied for this year oh. if you if you filed for 2024 yep. and you still have till March 1st and beyond that. And I'll explain that to file for homestead for 2024. OK, we will you will get the fifty thousand dollar homestead exemption, but the value, your assessed value of your property will equal market value. OK, the first year you file for homestead. Unless and we'll get into portability later, you have another homesteaded property that you can move a value to that property. Nice. If you're not homesteaded, your 2024 market value is going to be your market value and we take your 2023 assessed value that goes up by 10 percent is how that works if you're on your non-homesteaded property it can never exceed market assessed can never exceed market sure. they will converge at, at then they did uh, and back in the in the in the uh, late 2000s okay but so your assessed value can never exceed market. Homesteaded property, maximum 3% assessed increase. Non-homesteaded, maximum 10% assessed increase. And in, is in market is deemed by the assessment office or true market value? As deemed by our office. The value, we are required by state law to value every property, yeah. which is different than a lot of other states that many people have come from. Sometimes they only revalue every five years. We value every year. We value every property as of one day, January 1, and primarily in residential based on sales of similar properties from the year before. And the metrics for that valuation is what? I mean, I don't mean to take you off course, but what are the metrics you got to use to, to assess your market value? We look at similar properties in square footage, in 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 uh, land size, waterfront, non-waterfront, pools, no pool. We look at similar sales within your geographic area. I mean, Tarpon Springs is different than St. Pete, right? So, uh, and and then to come up with a value for that year. In most cases, that value is less than what you could sell it for. OK, uh, and we have a tax estimator on our website that we use for the taxes the year after you buy. OK, 86 percent of what you paid for it. OK, that's the overall average of value we put on in 23 based on 22 sales was 86 percent of purchase prices is what we valued property the next year. And then that, if you file for Homestead, you're locked in forever at because market equals assessed on that date. And then your assessed is locked in forever. Last the balance of the year is locked in forever or it just goes up or in the market goes? So. Well, the market can go up as the market has. I mean, the market has exploded. I mean, the market has exploded in the last three years. OK, I believe the increase in 2021 to 2022. Overall, Pinellas County was 23 percent increase in market value and 22 to 23 was around 13 percent. So that's massive growth. But if you're homesteaded. You're limited to that three, so you've created now that gap. Of well, of a lot, if it's 23 and then another 13 compounded on top of that. So and and I'll get into that gap and what you can do with it in a bit, and that's called portability. Any questions online? OK. So here's how it is a, a very simple example of how the cap works. What we've done here is assume a 5% increase in market every year, and then the maximum 3% cap on a newly purchased home every year going out seven years okay so over time in year seven you have there's a difference of about forty four thousand dollars okay between market value and assessed value okay that forty four thousand dollars is called your save our homes benefit 
if you're homesteaded, you are not paying any taxes on that difference. You're only paying taxes on the assessed value, less your, exempt, less your exemptions. If you're not homesteaded, you're paying school taxes on that difference. Although there is a 10% 10, 10 cap on your assessed value, there is no cap for school taxes on the market value. So, and school taxes represent about a third of your overall tax base. So in a rising market, like we've seen, the school taxes have gone, have jumped up a lot more than all the other tax bases on non-homesteaded property. But the school doesn't get any taxes on a homesteaded property for that Save Our Homes benefit. You're not paying taxes at all. So that differential is your Save Our Homes benefit. So what we did here is let's say the home sold in year seven, okay? Um, and let's say it sold for $575,000, okay? The next January one, we value that property based on not only that sale, but sales of similar homes in that geographic area. So we placed a value of $500,000 roughly 85% um, of the purchase price of 575, right? So the taxes that you inherit in year seven when you bought the property were 6164. The January one afterwards, your taxes jumped up to $9,000 because it's a change of ownership. Under state law, we're required to revalue that property remove all other exemptions. You now have to file for your own exemption. You do not inherit anyone else's exemption. I wanna make that very clear. You have to file for homestead. It doesn't automatically transfer from your prior property. When you buy a home, all we know is the name on a deed. We don't know that you owned another property. We don't know who you are until you file for homestead exemption because you have to provide us social security number date of birth, driver's license number, then we can identify you and see that you had a homestead somewhere else and, and help you do your portability as well, which I'll get into. So assessed value resets to just market value in the year after purchase. That is the biggest pain threshold for new buyers. They don't understand when they buy a property and they could buy a property from somebody who's lived, lived in a property for 35 years, which has a very low tax base because it's been homesteaded. And then when they buy it, you could see as much as six times increase in, in taxes. And I have an example coming up right here. This is a very um, now desirable neighborhood in St. Petersburg. The two houses, the one on the left was purchased in 2020 and their 2023 taxes were $4,700. The home on the right was bought in 1993 and homesteaded since that point. Their taxes are only $777. Exact same lot size, exact same square footage, right next to one another six times higher for the house on the left than the one on the right. Whoever buys that house on the right is going to see a $5,000 tax bill, not $777 the year after purchase. That's one, and, and our tax estimator on our website, please use it. In a lot of cases, your real estate professional doesn't disclose this to you. Um, we hope they do, but you can go on our website, put in your purchase price of any property you're thinking of buying with the address, and we can tell you within a reasonable estimate what your taxes will be the year after purchase. Because once that January 1 crosses, we're required to move it to market value. I mean, we get calls all the time, this time of year especially, because if people who bought in 2022, okay, let's say this house on the right was bought in 2022. 
and they their mortgage company was only withholding on their escrow account for seven hundred and seventy seven dollars in taxes. OK, twenty twenty three tax bill comes around and they see forty seven hundred dollars. So there's a shortage in your escrow account of about four thousand dollars. So you'll get a letter in January and say, A, you got to make up the shortage, which is four thousand dollars. And B, your new tax base is going to be forty seven hundred dollars, not seven hundred dollars. So we're going to add seven hundred dollars a month to your mortgage payment just for making up the shortage and being able to pay the tax bill in 2024. We get those calls all the time and people are like, what am I supposed to do? I mean, it's unfortunate, but when you buy a home, please, please, before you buy it, go on, go on the website, look at the tax estimator. And if you can afford the payment with the higher taxes the next year, tell your mortgage company to withhold more in your escrow. So you're not surprised a year later. And then you've got to scramble because your mortgage payment went up seven hundred dollars. I've homestead a property that I buy this year and the purchase price is hundred thousand dollars. It's assessed like let's say it's assessed at hundred thousand. So the most it'll go up, that's that hundred thousand dollar valuation is kept throughout my ownership of that property and can only escalate three percent a year on top of that. Yeah, we will we will look at your purchase price. We will re we will value it January one of twenty twenty five. Because you bought it this year. Um, and the value may not, it may be valued for less than what you paid for it. Their taxes may have a very low assessed value. Okay, you'll inherit their taxes for 2024 if, and I'll get into this later, it has homestead on it when you bought it. And that's really important. Otherwise, it, it happens in 24. Okay. Sure. And then in 25, that becomes your homestead, new value, market equals assessed. You get your $50,000 homestead, and then that assessed 2026 and beyond can only go up 3% max. Okay. Yes, Kyle. I'm not a resident until a few years later. When is your assessed value determined? Well, your assessed value is determined the January 1 after you purchase a home. You are inheriting the assessed value and the taxes of the people you bought the home from in the year you bought it, okay? The next January 1, your assessed value goes to market value based on not only your purchase price, but the purchase price of similar properties, okay? Then, if you're not eligible to, to be homesteaded, your assessed value is subject to that 10% cap until you file for homestead. Market value goes up 20, your assessed only goes up 10. So, so cause you're not homesteaded, you're still paying full school taxes on the full value, but only 10% increase on all other millages. But again, now you become a Florida resident and you file for homestead. It's just like you bought a new home. It's, it's, it's a quirk in the law that may or may not be fair. You could have a non-homesteaded property for years. And a lot of people have. They had vacation homes. Um, and they moved down here in the last two or three years and wanted to homestead their vacation home. They lost all their 10% cap difference. Gone once they filed for homestead. At, again, change of ownership or a new file for homestead, market equals assessed or assessed equals market. Same thing. We have to move it to market value under state law. Hopefully that answers your question. But the year you are become a Florida resident, um, I would urge you to file for homestead. Um, if you plan on homesteading the property, because it's a benefit that lives forever. Once from from the year after filing and beyond. So 
obviously, I'm on many of the New York state of the Yes. In my case, Massachusetts. Okay. I've resided here forever. I have home here. Yep. Vehicle here, all of that. I've not yet filed for homestead. Okay. But one of the limiting factors, and maybe this question I need to answer is that when, when I do that, I believe that I give up my one time half a million dollar exception on taxes for the gain, capital gain on the residents that I own in Massachusetts. That that is a US tax code yeah. question. Right, right, right. I, right. No. I I I I typically that gain rolls over into the, the new home that you bought until you ultimately sell your home. I advise you to check with your accountant sure, sure. on that one. We don't we don't answer federal tax questions. <laughs> Correct. Well, there, there, there's other issues too. I mean, a lot of people who move here, there's higher in auto insurance rates. Once you register your car and your license here, you're paying exorbitant insurance rates that may not be worth a homestead. You have to weigh all that. I'm not saying you shouldn't file for homestead, but you need to be aware of all the other costs associated with becoming a Florida resident. Um, well, I still have a vehicle here that I should put against Florida. Right. But you have to have a Florida driver's license in order to qualify for homestead. You cannot have an out-of-state driver's license unless you're active military and you move around all over the place. That's the only exception. So a little more about the non-homestead 10% cap, which was which was entered into law in 2008. Again, the assessed value can increase more than 10% a year. Applies to all properties that do not have a homestead exemption. And that could be commercial properties, vacant land. You cannot homestead a piece of vacant land. Um, you can leave a homestead on a piece of vacant land if you had homestead on the on the house and demoed it to build a new house. Homestead can stay. Um, vacation homes, rental properties, et cetera, et cetera. And again, all the 10 percent cap applies to all millages except school board now the school board millage is about is about six mills and if if your overall average bill is 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 uh, uh, 1.8 percent six is one third of that so school taxes is still a significant portion of your property taxes you can maintain your cap year over year provided ownership does not change you don't apply for homestead. Again, if you apply for homestead on a 10% cap property, you lose that 10% gap. There's no split or combo of the property during the previous year, and no new construction has occurred. That is one exception to both the 10% cap and the 3% cap. If you add an addition onto your property, Let's say it's another it's another 600 square feet or it's a new pool that you didn't have before that value of that addition goes on over the cap. You don't get to um, add to your property forever and not pay more property taxes because theoretically it makes your property more valuable. And you we get every permit um, that is filed by your uh, municipality and and the county if you're unincorporated pinellas um it, we we have access to every permit and we know what you're doing to your home um, and if it is an addition it will go on over the cap typically maintenance items such as a new roof you haven't had a roof in 20 years to get a new roof that is not added over the cap um so if and if you do certain things within your home that we typically don't know that don't require a permit you could put in new flooring you could as long as you don't move electrical and plumbing you could put in a new kitchen um a, a new kitchen cabinets that is not added over the cap ultimately that'll be reflected in your sales price if you have improved your home um and then will revalue that property for the for the new buyer. But um, it's remember any addition goes on over the cap.
So under understanding the, the, the recapture rule, um, there are times and there have been times over the last 20 years where market values rising, homesteaded value, the assessed value, the yellow line is just going up at CPI or less. OK, and you're creating that gap, which is your save our homes benefit. And then um, if people remember 2008, 2009, 2010, which was the great uh, real estate recession, values crashed back down and you lost that difference between your market value and assessed value, but they ride together. Never can assessed value be greater than market value. And then recently, if you look at this, this chart, year six, seven, and eight, let's just say that's 18 to 18 to 23, you've now seen the market value rising, your assessed value not rising as much, creating that, creating that gap one more time. So declining market, market value decreases, assessed value still increases. So your taxes may still go up in a declining market because your assessed value is going up by 3% or CPI, whichever is less. And then in, and then they ride together. And then when market increases again, the 3% kicks in and a homesteaded property is not paying taxes on that differential. Any questions? Okay. Affordability. This also came in in 2008, whereby there was value being created for homesteaded homeowners in Florida that if they sold their home prior to 2008, they lost that value. Um, they were not being taxed on the difference between market value and assessed value. So <laughs> the legislature and, and the tax payers voted in a concept of ported, portability, whereby if you sell a Florida homesteaded home and buy another Florida homesteaded home, you can take that difference in your first home that you sold your save our homes benefit with you. That is known as portability. Just think of it as taking your save our homes benefit with you. But you have, there is a dollar limit and you have a certain amount of time in order to do that. So time to port is three tax years from January 1. Okay, and application for portability must accompany your homestead application on the new home you bought. Um, we will remind you um, on our website, you're asked, what's your previous homesteaded home? And if it's, if, it, if it's in Florida, we will ask you a question also, do you want to apply for portability? So um, it's a very important thing to do because you don't want to lose your portability because it's a very significant benefit that you can take with you for years. So how do you estimate portability? Well, the difference between the home you're that now January one value of the home you're selling and your assessed value, that difference you can take with you. If your new just value of the home you bought, the January one after you bought it, because it has to be revalued, is greater than the one you sold in the year you sold it, you get full portability. You get the entire amount subject to a half a million dollar limit. That's the maximum portability you can take with you. Now, if you downsize, if your market value of the home you sold is less than the market value, the January one after you bought, then you get a portion of that, that gap. And you could have a gap of on an expensive home of a million dollars, but if you downsize more than 50%, you're still going to get close to $500,000 benefit. So we handle every bit of this in the in our tax estimator. If it's Pinellas, <coughs> excuse me, if it's Pinellas to Pinellas, 
um, we will we will compute that for you. And we have links to other counties' websites whereby you can get your market and assessed value of the home you sold in that county. And if you're porting into Pinellas. So the portability timeline used to be two years, two January ones. Um, however, um, Mr. Twitty championed legislation that got it increased to three January ones back in 2021. So, for example, the year you sell, and let's say you sold in 2023, January 1 of 23 is 1 January 1. That counts. That's the value, the market value of the home you sold. January 1 of 24 and 25 make three January 1s. You have to homestead a new property by 1 1 of 26. Otherwise, you will lose your portability. And the reason it was so important to increase it from two to three years is if you sell in December, okay, January 1 of the year you sold is still one January 1. So in the past, you only had 13 months to qualify for homestead. And people were selling late in the year, putting a contract on a new home or a condo that was under construction. And guess what? It didn't get done in time. Because that January 1 of the next year passed, it wasn't done, they lost their portability. So adding that third year <laughs> was a huge benefit. And again, the January 1 of the year you sold is 1 January 1. It's not when you sold it, and the value is not what you sold it for. The value is what we have on it the January 1 of the year you sold. We'll go into a few common missteps um, that happen a lot and cause a lot of pain and increased taxes um, for, for some uh, property owners. I touched on this a lot earlier, a new home buyer, please don't rely on the taxes that are on the home currently. Use our tax estimator Put in the purchase price you're paying. We will give you an estimate of what those taxes will be the year following your purchase. In most cases, you are inheriting the homestead exemption of the people you bought it from. Okay. And they could be that example, $777 versus, versus $4,700. That's a big deal. You want to you want to make sure that you know how much your tax bill is going to be the year after purchase, and for that matter, every year beyond that, because that sets your floor that starts the three percent cap. That's very important. A lot of people at the end of the year decide, oh, for estate planning or for liability purposes, I want to change my deed. And I want to put my property in an LLC to protect myself legally. Um, that crosses to January 1, you just lost your homestead and your cap, gone. And there's nothing you can do to get it back. Yes, sir. That wouldn't be the case if you put it in a trust, though, right? A trust, as long as you are the trustee of the trust and you have an interest in real property. If you're your own trustee, that that's typically fine, but we encourage people to... Run the trust by us because we will ask for the relevant trust documents to make sure it qualifies. Run the trust by us and we can, our office, we have, we have lawyers on staff that are happy to tell you if you qualify for homestead. Based. Okay, that, that should be fine. But there are other, there are other things that may exist in the trucks that could disqualify. That, that's why we need to, that's why we need to see it. Cap resets. When current property owner benefiting from a 10% cap applies for homestead, another big 
pain threshold recently with market values increasing like like crazy. If you're first applying for homestead, you lose your 10% cap, sometimes causing you to pay more taxes with homestead than without. We're happy to do an analysis for you. If you think you'd be better off not having homestead, I've done it for um, dozens upon dozens of taxpayers who say, look, what is, what is my tax difference? I'm going to lose my 10% cap. I get it. I want to file for homestead. You can file for homestead. We can do an analysis, analysis for you, and you can see that you're paying more taxes with homestead. You can also rescind a homestead exemption if you want in that first year. You say, we'll allow you to do that, and we'll give you the analysis to show you the difference between the two. Another important part of a real estate transaction, and this happens more often than not, especially people buying this time of year in the first quarter. OK, they're buying a home. From a person who, let's say the, that lady who had only had seven hundred seventy seven dollars worth of taxes. Um, in February. No one even talks about they base the tax proration on last year's taxes, $777. Little do we know that two days after she sells the house, she applies for homestead on another house that she bought in December. Guess what? The homestead on the home you just bought is removed. And that $777 goes to $4,700 in your first year in 24, not 25. I encourage you if you are buying a home to specifically request from the seller, are you leaving the homestead on this property for 2024? That's very important because at least you get one year of their old taxes instead of it happening in the year you bought it. So because this happens a lot and if they go and 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 apply in another county, we are obligated. To remove the homestead exemption on the home they sold. And then you have an issue with depending on when you bought the house, you could buy it in July and they could still file for homestead somewhere else and we'd have to remove it. That proration would be way off. Now you have an issue with the seller and the title company. There's nothing we can do about it in our office. It could be thousands of dollars. So please, um, we encourage you to understand the seller's intentions with regard to their homestead exemption. Once the homestead uh, owner tells us to remove their homestead, it will be reflected on our website as no homestead within two to three business days. However, we will not have a calculation of the taxes um, that should be prorated at closing. We can help the title company do a better estimate than the prior year, but we don't know how we valued the property as of January 1 yet, depending on when that happened. So. Uh, encourage the title company to call our office to get a better estimate of taxes in the year you buy. If in fact there is no homestead on the property and there was the year before. And please check the homestead status on our website of the property you are buying. Um, we get a lot of questions. Can I rent my homesteaded property? Um, if you, the state law says you cannot rent your property for more than 30 days in two consecutive years. So if you rent for 45 days in 2023, you cannot rent for more than 30 days in 2024. This is a big issue in our county. We get a lot of calls with Airbnb and VRBO, um, um, a lot of complaints. Those of loud parties next door and they say they're homesteaded. 
but um, certain jurisdictions require you to register if you are renting your home, like the city of Clearwater requires a business license in order for you to do that. I would check with your jurisdiction if you are allowed to rent and what the intervals of time you can rent for. But if you violate that 30 days in that second consecutive year, we will remove the homestead in that second year. 45 days in year one and you go over 30, it's a, say you do 32 days in year two, you've just lost your homestead for year two. That is the state law. And if you fail to notify us that you've done that, not only are you responsible for the difference in taxes without the homestead and the cap that you lost, you could be subject to a penalty of 50, that's five zero percent of the unpaid taxes and 15 percent interest annually compounded. And folks, we can go back 10 years under state law. That becomes a very hefty bill. You have every opportunity to tell us every year when we send your homestead renewal notice that you are no longer living there or you're renting, et cetera, et cetera. I encourage you to do so because it can cost you a lot of money down the road. Um, and and we and we've had we've had uh, and and it becomes a lien on your property if you don't pay it. So if you have a mortgage, guess what? The mortgage company is not going to want you to have a lien on your property. So they'll pay it and then get the money from you. Um, we had it. We had a case three years ago to give you a quick example. Single person in Tampa owns a condo on Bayshore. Single person in Clearwater owns a condo in San Key. Both million dollar condos in the year that we found out they got married. Okay. She was the only only one on the deed in Tampa. He's the only one on the deed in, in Clearwater. They got married eight years ago. They decided they didn't not to tell us. Okay. How did we find out? Like most cases, we find out from an anonymous caller. My only guess is they were bragging at a cocktail party. Yeah. Oh, we have two homesteads. We're married. They're never going to find us because she's on her deed and I'm on my deed. They don't even know we're married. Well, we got a phone call. We can we have databases that we can look up. We found out the year they were married. <laughs> he um, he came in within the 30 day period before a lien was filed on his condo and wrote a check for eighty five thousand dollars. And lost his cap forever and he can't have homestead on his condo. So. It behooves you to follow the law and be honest um, um, because eventually it could cost you a lot of money. Changes to the deed. A lot of people change their deed to add their kids to um, uh, add a friend, whoever they want to give the house to in, in, the, in the event of their passing. Sometimes they make a huge, huge mistake. It is very important that when you make a deed change, this is a legal document that creates new ownership. I've seen parents wanting to add their child and what they did is they deeded the house to their child. They lost their homestead exemption, they lost their cap, and they didn't realize it for two or three years. And then at that point, um, they had to file a new deed to start their homestead exemption all over again. It can cause a significant increase in your taxes, especially if you file a deed as close to January 1 in December. That's when a lot of people, they do their estate planning and their tax planning. Once that crosses January 1 and that new deed's filed in December, there's nothing we could do. If you do your planning in advance in June or July, we're more than happy to take a look at your new deed to let you know. Again, we have lawyers on staff before you file it, run it by our office. We'll say, yep, this is fine. This won't this won't hurt your homestead exemption at all. So please don't wait till the last minute in a calendar year. 
because you could be causing an increase in taxes, significant increase in taxes um, in, in, in the next year after January 1. I encourage you again to please contact us before making deed changes. We can't give you legal advice as to how the deed should be worded, but and we always recommend you have a lawyer prepare the deed. Uh, a lot of people prepare their own quick claim deed and file it, and that's where most mistakes are made. So please be careful. We don't want you to pay more taxes than you have to. There are a myriad of other personal exemptions that are available to you besides the homestead exemption. Um, most of them, most if not all of them, relate to being a disabled veteran, having a disability of some sort, and not a veteran, um, and veterans and first responders as far as disability is concerned, or over 65, or a widow widower. Those exempt those exemptions, the widow widower exemptions used to be a, a whopping $500 exemption until 2023, which was worth about eight bucks off your tax bill. Now it's 5,000. So it's worth 80 to to $100, depending on where you live. Um, so if you have, if you become a widow or widower in a particular year, you're eligible for that exemption the next January 1. Again, for as long as you remain a widow widower and do not remarry. If you remarry, you got to notify our office and say, please take that off because I'm remarried. And if you marry someone who has a homestead exemption, please be sure you take off one of the two homestead exemptions as well. Married married couple cannot have two. In any state, you could marry someone who has an exemption in Illinois. If they keep that house and you have your homestead exemption here, you've just lost your exemption in the state of Florida. Yes, and at the top, um, if you want to learn more about these exemptions, um, I will be back along with some of our exemption specialists on Thursday, February 9th, uh, same time, noon to 1 p.m. Thursday, February 9th. Fifteenth. Okay, my apologies. It's Thursday, February 15th. I hope to be here. My daughter's due with my first grandchild on February 14th. So, <laughs> so hopefully uh, I'll be able to be here and um, not not in support of her at the time. So um, again, that's February 15th from noon to one, and there will be information on our website with regard to that that you can view. But we want you to be to have every exemption that you qualify for. We'll, we'll, we'll help you in any way, shape, or form. We'll encourage you to apply. And um, some of them are very valuable, like the total and permanent disability, especially for a veteran, um, where you pay no property taxes. If you are deemed by the VA as totally and permanently disabled, you pay no ad valorem taxes. Yes, sir. So, your exception only for low income? Yes. Yes, it is. And that uh, that number in 2022 tax return, we don't know the 23 number yet, was 35167 Your adjusted gross income for the household can't be more than 35167 So it's a pretty low threshold, yeah. but it's a, it's a, it, and it's an extra exemption off your municipal taxes only. Yeah, only off your municipal, not your total tax bill. It's just a municipality that you live in. Some are some are around two to three hundred dollars. Some are around fifty bucks. But it's still worth it. If you if you qualify, why not get the discount? <clears throat> and to wrap up um, with it with a few uh, tidbits, our website www.pcpao.gov. It is chock full of information that. 
please use it. Please look at it. Um, it's easy to navigate. It's easy to find. There's a Q&A session. There's a FAQ session. Um, you can find everything you want to know about your property, your tax bill, your trim notice. Um, so it's very important that you, you use the website and effective the 17th, is that correct, of January? This is, this is our brand new website and we will retire pcpao.org. Some of you may have been used to going to pcpao.org. Um, if you do in the future, it'll automatically revert to gov. So that will that will um, that will be our new website going forward, starting next in six days. We look forward to it too. Recently, as you know, if you are a resident of Pinellas County, there were several thousand properties damaged, unfortunately, by Hurricane Adelia, um, mostly from flooding. Um, the state of florida authorized a refund if your home was damaged due to hurricane adelia or any other calamity um, towards your 2023 property taxes um, we sent a letter to every property that we were aware um, that was damaged that went out this week uh, giving you the information that you need to provide us in order, we have already processed some refunds. Um, the refunds are based on the days you are displaced from your home. And it's based on the value of your structure um, for the days that you were displaced from your home. It's not your full tax bill. It's the value of your structure. But it is a refund. Um, um, every little bit helps. Um, I've already We've already processed some 25 to 30. Um, we expect many more to come in. Um, and if you were displaced for the entire period and still are, um, that maximum days for 23 is 124 because the hurricane hit on August 30th of 2023. So please pay attention to your mail. Um, uh, you should receive that. And if you, if you did not receive it, there is a copy of what we sent you in your parcel in our in our internal database we're more than happy to email it to you and get that to you as soon as possible so stay in the know follow the pao um please sign up for our newsletter um uh, we uh, again uh, full of information about what what is important with regard to home ownership and your property taxes and your property value um Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, or attend one of our public education sessions, um, which you, was uh, some of you have attended today. Future public education sessions, besides the um, personal exemption one on February 15th, um, we have uh, website tools and navigations, uh, personal exemptions, as we talked about, property tax process for businesses, which is uh, uh keep uh, tangible personal property uh related and uh, and sessions for real estate professionals as well and again all those will be published on our website and you can register right on our website for these future sessions one thing i want to end with which is very important um a the clerk of the court has a property fraud alert service which is extremely valuable um, there are instances of property fraud whereby someone could potentially um, file a new deed and claim ownership of your property. Um, I registered for this about, I don't know, five or six years ago. It is free. You can sign up at propertyfraudalert.com at the, at the, um, on the clerk's website and register your name, your spouse's name, um, and what it does if anything is filed at the clerk's office in your name or a name as similar to yours as possible. My name is Kevin J. McKeon. If I, I've gotten alerts for a Kevin P. McKeon. I mean, and this this includes, you know, possibly deeds, which God forbid. Um, it, it, it includes when there's a notice of commencement, when you have a permit that's over a certain value, there's a notice of commencement required to be filed. 
you will get an alert on your cell phone or an email, your choice. It's an incredibly valuable service to where you can, you are alerted immediately the minute it's filed and you can do something about it right away. So I encourage you to register for the property. What's that? Whether you have a homestead or not. Whether you have a homestead or not, because it, this, could, this could be deep for a homestead doesn't, you know, there's a lot of properties that don't have homestead. So that wraps up our presentation. Um, we thank you for joining us um, in this uh, first session of 2024 and hope we hope you found it informative and um, we look forward to presenting uh, future sessions and providing you future information. So if there if there are any questions out there, none. Hearing none, um, not bad. I only went five minutes over. So uh, thank you all for your attention and have a great day and the rest of your week. Appreciate it.